time we have ourselves at day four of simplifying trigonometric identities. Okay, none of the examples today in the notes have answers, so they're all going to be simplify. And all of them are going to simplify to a single term. Okay, so what that means is no adding or subtracting. We have to have single terms. For example, you could have something like 2xy squared. That is a single term, but you can't have plus or minus. Then you get two terms. Okay, um, I'm going to be doing some of these part of the way and some of them not so much the way because we're on the last day, so I need you to, to kick it in here a little bit. So first of all, I noticed two quantities here. And these things are called conjugates. What do we do with conjugates? We definitely multiply them out. So we're going to go ahead and multiply those conjugates out. Conjugates usually make a difference of squares, which usually makes some sort of identity. You can go ahead and fill in these things that I'm talking about. And we're going to get a final answer here. Okay? I want to see what you can come up with tomorrow in class. All right. How about some hints for number two? This one is a little unusual. I've never seen one like this before. Sine squared, sine to the fourth, sine to the sixth. There's a lot of signs in there. So I'm thinking we should do some factoring. Let's factor out something. Let's take out as many signs as we can. Let's take out sine squared. Okay, equal sign. Sine squared of, of theta. They're all thetas. And then inside parentheses, that's going to give us a 1 minus 2 with sine squared of theta left over. And plus, there was six of them. If I take two out, that's going to be sine to the fourth theta. And there's also cosine of theta out there. Right here, that can be factored. One minus two sine squared plus sine to the fourth. So maybe I'll help with the factoring just a little bit. It's going to make two sets of parentheses. Don't forget about that cosine. So write everybody down. When we factor this, it's going to be 1. And then outers and inners, so they both have to be minus. It's a perfect square trinomial is what it is. And this is going to be sine squared theta and sine squared theta. Is that right? Negative sine squared, negative sine squared, negative 2 sine squared. A negative times a negative, okay. Ooh, in fact, that looks very familiar. So I think we're going to have to use some identities and some more identities right there. Okay, and our final answer is going to be one term. One term, no pluses, no minuses, but it might have a couple of things. Were you careful with the negative signs, I hope? Okay, number three, when you see an example like this, two fractions being subtracted, I hope you're automatically saying to yourself, hmm, let's make some common denominators. So I'm going to go ahead and write the first fraction here. And we are going to have to multiply by some quantity. So let's just get this all set up. Okay, and subtraction. The second fraction is 1 minus sine of theta over 1 plus sine of theta. Okay, I have to be very careful with that minus sign. And I'm going to multiply this fraction by something. So you want to make common denominators. This denominator already has a 1 minus sign, so let's give him a 1 plus sign. And whatever you do to the bottom, you're going to have to do to the top. This fraction already has a 1 plus sign in the denominator, so let's multiply top and bottom by 1 minus sine of theta. Remember, you have to write it twice. You have to use parentheses. So what does that give us? 
should I distribute the bottoms, the denominators? Of course, those are conjugates. They're going to make a difference of squares. Uh, this is also 1 minus sine squared of theta, of course, because they're common denominators. Now, if I don't multiply the numerators on, I have quantity, quantity, minus quantity, quantity, and really, how am I going to clean that up? So I think we are going to have to go ahead and distribute those. This is 1, outers and inners, plus 2, sine of theta, plus sine squared of theta. Now, this is a minus sign, so 1 minus 2 sine theta plus sine squared of theta. Okay. Now, I think I've said a couple times, we have to be careful with that minus sign. We are going to be very careful because we have this stuff minus this stuff. Okay, so everything here is going to have to get subtracted. You're going to have to distribute in that negative sign. So what's going to happen here? We're going to get a nice cleaned up numerator. I think we're going to get an identity down here. I think we're going to go ahead and write this as uh, a bunch of things all separated out. And the reason for that is you're going to take some of them and put them together because fractions are not as simple as not fractions. So can you please come up with an answer that has no denominator in it? Can you please bring all those denominators up or pair them with someone in the numerator to make a single term? Okay, we'll see what you can come up with there. Single term. Okay. And this next one right here. When I was studying this problem, there was a couple of things that you could do. I could put this part here over 1 and make some common denominators. I would multiply top and bottom by 1 plus cotangent squared. But 1 plus cotangent squared times some more, that's going to be getting really large. And I can't help but notice that this right here is an identity. All right, so let's go ahead and replace the denominator with the identity. Please tell me what 1 plus cotangent squared of theta is equivalent to. Go ahead and look back in your notes if you don't know. Or what we could do if you're stuck on a test is make it real fast. So I know sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. And what if I needed to figure out this identity in a pinch? I need cotangent which is cosine over sine. Let's divide by sine squared, 1. Divide by sine squared, cotangent squared. Divide by sine squared. Ah, now we have it. I'm going to replace that denominator with cosecant squared of theta. Okay, and here's a technique that sometimes we might use. I'm going to give each of them their own denominator. I'm going to give the 1 the cosecant squared of theta, and I'm going to give cotangent squared of theta his denominator of cosecant squared. Is that true? If you saw these two fractions with these common denominators, would you be able to put them together over one denominator? Yes, they could each get their own. And this says plus 2 cosine squared of theta. Okay, I think it's time to maybe bring some of these guys upstairs. 1 over cosecant. That can be written a little more simple if I just said sine squared of theta. Uh, this one I might have to do a little bit of work on. Cotangent squared. Hmm. Well, let's just write down cotangent squared of theta. And then 1 over cosecant, that's going to be times sine squared theta. Okay, so now we're definitely getting close here. I know that this one right here can be written as a fraction times that stuff, and then you got some more stuff here, and then you got some more stuff here. And remember, it simplifies down to a single term. Let's see who can go home and figure that out. Okay. 
back to the beginning of the chapter, we did things like this, where we did inverses. Remember, when you have an inverse, inverse, inverse answers are angles, are angles. So I'm thinking of an angle. What angle has that letter? Letter, this is called abstract. You can't really do letters, so we're going to have to draw a picture. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that inside part and we're going to say let tangent inverse of u equal some sort of angle. What kind of angle should we make it be? How about a theta? And let's write this backwards problem as a forwards problem. Tangent of theta equals u over 1. Now we have an excellent SOHCAHTOA trig statement here. We're going to go ahead and write a triangle and I'll put a theta in it. And tangent, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So the opposite is u and the adjacent is 1. So we're going to have to solve for that hypotenuse. But when we go back up here to the problem, it's going to get real nice and sweet. Tan inverse, I said, was theta. And now that we have a picture, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, you can go ahead and find the answer. If you find the hypotenuse, then you'll be able to answer that. Okay, to do these problems down here, these are all inverse problems. Inverse means you go backwards and you state the angle. But this one right here, this is just a forwards problem. So to do these, especially the nested ones, you do inside first. Tangent of 3 pi over 4 is negative 1. And now I'm thinking of an angle where the sine is negative 1. What angle am I thinking of? Okay, to do all the inverses, we have to remember that sine uses quadrants 1 and 4. Oh, let's say sine inverse. And cosine inverse uses quadrants 1 and 2. And tangent inverse uses quadrants 1 and 4. And remember how you're supposed to state the answers for sine and tangent in quadrant 4? You can go up pi over 2 or down pi over 2. Do not swing around. You have to say plus or minus answers. Okay, why don't you go ahead and give these a try, and we're going to check them tomorrow.